Yes, hello and welcome to Footy Talk for your Thursday. Footy Talk, of course, is your place for the latest news, interviews and analysis from the world of AFL. And it wouldn't be a Thursday without my good mate across the table, he sure joining me. Heater, welcome. Thanks, Daisy. And you know what? No. It seems like I'm going to be a regular now. You I think are. this is, might be our show on the Thursday, which is good. See the carpet? Yeah. You're now part of the fabric of Beautiful. this show. Is it red carpet? Uh, no, no it's uh, not. we'd lose you and your hair and your freckles in and amongst <laughs> that. Hey, uh, the biggest talking point of the week is suspensions and Peter Wright getting th- four weeks after hoping for three after a uh, footballing collision with Harry Cunningham. I'm pretty sure that's his name. That's yeah. correct. Yes. Um, your take on that and where to from here? It was a re- It's a real tough one because if he wants to be declared soft being what seven foot tall and the five foot midget standing in the hole in front of him. He just stops and lets him sort of go through and mark Mm. it. But if you do what you're a key forward and you're supposed to do, you're supposed to go through and make a contest of it, which he did. It's the old theory, but if he keeps his eyes up, yeah, but then he probably gets away with it. But yeah, I don't, I, Honestly, it's it's a real tough one. But four weeks, again, it's like we, we wanted these players playing. We don't want them on the sidelines. And the Max King, yep, yeah, he's... He got a week. He got a yeah. week. There's another one out. Like, that's another key forward. Yeah, and it could... Like, it could cost Essendon potentially a final spot because he is pretty vital. Absolutely. Um, he's a leading goal kicker last season or the season before. Did he have lots of injuries last year? Anyway, one of them. He's a vital part. Do you think now we're just going to get to the point where he accept players pulling out of contests. It used to be the most frowned upon thing in the game is if you were to go back and the old phrase, it's your turn to go for the side you had to. Whereas now I think we're just going to accept, oh, well, he didn't get four weeks suspension. So that was a good decision. Yeah. I reckon the, I reckon the coaches would be pretty happy with that. Like usually you get the, the Monday morning meeting. If he didn't go back with the flight or he didn't crunch the, the defender who sat in the hole, then you, you would, you would cop it. Um, but now it's like, we don't want you missing week so just stop yep. or just give him a cuddle I don't know what what else are you going to do because that was like a split second decision and we spoke about it last week AFL players make thousands of decisions during a game that was one of them he might have got it wrong just by not putting his hands up but it's cost him four weeks and it shouldn't cost you four weeks is this going to be an ongoing thing regardless and I think now this has become pretty clear if you make any contact whether it be incidental accidental with the player in the head, you are going to get, well, one week Max King got, and that was the slightest of glancing blows. Yeah. Do you think this is just where it is? If you make any contact with a player above the shoulders, you are getting weak suspension. Yeah, 100%. Even if Cunningham got up, he oh, probably gets two. This if he con- gets up, if he's not concussed and he gets up straight away, he probably still gets two. But, yeah, I don't know. It's, Do we now it's, it's so got confusing. to this point? Do we have to allow Brownlow medalists to still win if they've been suspended because yeah. it's so easy to be suspended well, now? Well, the NRL, what do they do? Just, they just deduct you a few votes. Do they? Yeah. Okay. Well, cause if this is evolving as it is and so quickly, I think we need to catch up. In a, like, If you're a Brownlow medalist and you clip someone like Max King and you get a week, but you're still good enough to win the Brownlow. There's so many variables for you to lose the Brownlow. You get yeah. suspended. It almost could be St- uh, Stephen Bradbury. You get injured. <laughs> you get injured. Yeah, there's there's plenty now. It's um, first ten blokes are all ineligible because they've got a week. Imagine and, uh, that, but honestly, that's like a it's, pretty smart point. Imagine the top ten vote getters <laughs> at the suspected. Brown layer have all been suspended and ineligible, yeah. and you're you're number eleven. Yeah, you'd be wrapped, wouldn't you? <laughs> Do you reckon you're like, yeah, I'm the best player in the league? I don't think so. You're the eleventh best. But they that's going to have to happen, surely. I hope it happens this year because then they're going to have to change the rule. Yeah. I hope the top five are all suspended <laughs> and imagine- or they get a week <laughs> and then number six just slides in Bradbury style <laughs> and Bradbury presents him with the brown line. So that would have meant the last year maybe Errol Goulden or someone. Did he, he finish third? Up? Did he? Yeah. That's quickly- might- Toby Green was up there. Hey, just Siri, quietly. what were the 2023 Brownlow medal Finishing in order. Finishers. Here we go. Somehow Siri got to the bottom of that. That's pretty good. You've done it that before. Was... Figured you out. Yeah. AI. <laughs> AI's. 
<laughs> Got me covered. Lockie Neal, he won. Very good. Lockie Neal, Errol Goulden. So he and Zach Butters finished tied fourth. Yeah. Or Christian Petrarca would have won it on 26 votes. Fifth. Fifth. Who was after that? Uh, Bont. Was Bont down there a little bit? Or he, he finished was, second. Yeah, yeah he, he was second. Right. Yeah, he nearly won it, yeah. Well, it'll be... Let's just let's just hope that happens, Dale. And yeah, we we'll have well, to change the rules. The we're, we're forward thinking here. We have. They're going to have to think about this now. The AFL when they listen to this. And I think, from what I can recall, we're the first persons who have put this out there. And I'll actually put my hand up and say it was my idea that I thought of five seconds ago. It, it actually was, and I quickly picked up on it. Yes, said, Dale, that's actually so. Therefore, a good idea. the Brownlow should be named the Short Thomas Medal. We, we should ongoing. We should, I reckon we should present it if like if the top <laughs> five who are in betting. Yep. And then they get eliminated then we should actually get to present it because we came up with the idea or we figured this was get, was going to happen. We saw into the future. We did. We are absolute geniuses. A big game this weekend for Tom Hawkins, 350 games. That's a lot of Saturdays dedicated to chasing a ball around. How many did you get to? 325. If you weren't suspended, how many would you have got? I would have got 350. 350. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tom Hawkins, have a listen to this for a resume. Three times premiership player, Coleman medal. Kaji Greaves medal, five-time All-Australian, 11-time Geelong leading goal kicker. He's currently second on the most games played list behind Joel Salwood. Only five more to get. Uh, he is or has been a superstar of the competition, but also the Geelong footy club. And I love the fact that he was questioned a couple of years ago whether he's going to go on, whether he was good enough to go on, and now he's still playing some great football at the ripe old age of mid-30s. I just love the fact that he's a genuine key forward who just stays inside 50 yeah. and he doesn't move. That's why he's played 350 odd games. He's a, um, he's a farmer <laughs> who loves just standing inside. He goes, you know what? He's thought he's figured it out. Oh, he ventures outside 50. Maybe he gets to 60 a couple of times. If he's coming he's, for a rotation. Yeah, <laughs> man. But he's like, I'm, I can't kick a goal from, it's like netball. He can, yeah. You can't score from outside the semicircle. So he's like, I'm going to stand near the goals and I'm just going to do what I do best. And he said it in his press conference the other day. He said, I just figured out what I was good at and I yep. know what I'm good at. And I just kept on working on that every single day and made that the key to my game and the key to playing so many games, kicking so many goals, all strains. And he's, and he's done most of his all strains in his thirties. Yeah. Late age. So good on him. Is he up there in the conversation for best forward ever? Gary no. Ablett senior? No. Better? He'd be number two. Who oh, else? at Geelong. Yeah, at Geelong. Sorry. I've yeah. ever. No, no, not, not Yeah, ever. at Geelong, definitely. He'd be near level peggings, wouldn't he? Oh, I would think so. Obviously, a different era, and Gary Ablett kicked a lot of a goals, goals in seasons, yeah. hundred plus a few times. But yeah, how many times have we seen a hundred kicked in this modern day? No, Very exactly. few. It's different generations. It style. is. If he gets to three fifty five, should he have a new stand named after him? If they do change and decide to, nah, they should take it off Joel. <laughs> They should take just, it off him. Just, just remove it. Up, yeah, just put a put a line through it. Yeah. Just put his one uh, underneath. Uh, Three fifty six. <laughs> just get the white out. Hundred percent. <laughs> That's how it works. That is. You're either best or you're not. He's done all that. Yeah. Just wasn't captain. Now before we get to the big game tonight, we of course will look forward to Good Friday football as well, the public holiday. But it is now North Melbourne taking on Carlton. Now North's record in this game, as we know, well their record in general has been pretty poor, but. They they macked a couple of times in this fixture. Do you give them any hope? Against Carlton? Yeah. Um, I actually don't mind the way they're going about it north at the moment. They're they're a bit more aggressive with their ball movement, which is good, but yep. you can get exposed the other way. And I think a team like Carlton, who's pretty solid in the back half, will expose them going the other way. So um, Carlton off a bye, though, is that? No, nah, they'll be right. That, that would have been good. They'll be okay. They might get some key names back too, which mm. is, which is good. But like, you know what? You got to give North some love. Like they need, just leave them on good Friday. It's okay. Just it's leave not, them there. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. Hopefully everyone. At some point they'll come good. Well, they will. You'd hope so. And they yeah. do have the nucleus now of some good players down do. there, especially in that half back line. Sheasel. He's a superstar. Wardlaw. Um, they've got some players Lucky, who are coming on. Mate, Lucky's underrated. Lucky's one of the best forwards in the game. Yeah. All Australian last year. 70 odd goals last year. In a side that team kicked finished. 80. For, That's an amazing I, effort. <laughs> and I apologise to all the North fans who've just said, you smart ass. Um, Carlton in that one, comfortably? Yeah. 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 
If you can get along, of course, it will be the Good Friday appeal as well. So if you can donate, please do so. Hey, we'll take a break. But after this, we are going to look forward to tonight's massive game between the Brisbane Lions and the Pies at the Gabatoir. This is the Footy Talk Podcast. Welcome back to the Footy Talk Podcast tonight. It is Thursday, which means Thursday night footy. You can catch that all on Triple M Footy and on the Listener app. Now, Heath, this is one of the biggest games of the season, and it's round three. It would have. It would have. Ready? Colling, listen I get to this. It, I get Collingwood it. are a chance to go zero and four in round three. Make sense of that. Yeah. Well, it would have been the biggest game of the year because <laughs> even if they, both teams hadn't lost a game. Yes. But they've gone the complete opposite way to make things interesting. So, um, yeah, I'd say zero and four is not ideal. Can't um, play finals if zero and four. Are you bold enough to say that? Because I am. It's 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 very hard. I think Sydney was zip, zipping three last year mm. and they played finals, but they went on like an 11 game streak. I just think Collingwood, they just need a key forward that can present and then my check can be get the second best defender and then makes life easier for him. Dan McStay but, has proven to be a massive out. We didn't really understand when the yeah, Pies went. No, but yeah. Well, he's the one though. He's when he plays, they play differently. Yeah, I get it. But the way they're actually playing at the moment, Dan McStay won't help. It them. doesn't matter if you have Wayne Carey up yeah, there. Is exactly. that what we're getting at? Exactly. <laughs> they're just, they're just off the boil. Um, I think Dacos, if he goes back to halfback, will give him a bit more, better drive out of the back line. They won't be turning it over in back 50 and the ball going straight back over their heads for a goal. So that would be one thing that I would um, advise for them. But I still think they're they're a sneaky. I think they're a massive show. Because everyone's talking, obviously, about the Pies. But Brisbane, too, like a zip and two, which they, three, will soon be. They have been poor. They've the, been very poor. The concerning part for me is... Brisbane's firepower up yeah. forward versus Collingwood's defense. Which hasn't really been there. No. And Brisbane have scored. And the thing with Brisbane, I think they've got one of the most dangerous forward lines in the comp. Yeah. Along with probably like Geelong, because every single one of those players in that forward line can kick five goals yeah. on the on the day. Joe Danaher, and, Eric Hipwood, Charlie Cameron, Link, Link McCarthy, McCarthy, Zach Bailey. And they all have. Hugh's got so, luggage. So <laughs> Roger Merritt. Um, so that's, Danny Dick Foss. <laughs> that's what I love about that forward line is like anyone can yeah. kick five and they have in the past. And that's why but, Collingwood have to be really, really well, organized only, and settled down back because someone could get a hold of them. Well, you only have to look to round zero when Jesse Hogan kicked four, mm-hmm. little Daniels kicked four mm-hmm. and Callum Brown kicked five. Five. Um, so a uh, reason for winning and a tip, if you could, please. Um, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go Brisbane because I reckon they'll get <laughs> more goals. <laughs> you've, just, you've just talked yourself out of it. Yeah, I just did then, right then. I honestly think for the Pies, they will win this one. I, I've just got this backs to the wall, almost a free hit. And I know that probably sounds a bit weird because if they lose, they're done. Travel it. together. Yeah, a little bit of that. Yeah. You know, We've been playing bad. It's not as bad as it seems. Let's get together. GWS and Sydney are the form teams of the comp. They are. Like, they're five, bot- five goal better team than anyone at the moment. St. Kilda will be the, probably the most improved. Correct. The way they went about and things. And for how bad Collingwood were last week, last Thursday, I think it was, they almost got yeah, 15 the, points. Yeah, 15 really points. Was. And in one stage, it looked like they were starting to get their mojo back. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it would be a good game. Okay. Uh, what are you up to for Easter? I'm actually going to Adelaide. Great. For, for Easter. Nice. Yeah. Are you staying on for Gather Round? I am. I'm staying on for Gather Round. And then, no, I'm not. I'm staying on for your fight. Oh, next Wednesday. I'm not. For, yeah, I'm not staying for Gather Adelaide Round. Adelaide 36 I knew there was is some Arena. Why I was staying. Um, Wednesday. Yeah, I've got, I've got a function on the Tuesday night. Okay. That's sort of why I'm going over. And then Wednesday, you're fighting... The great Dane Swan. So I thought, you know what? Boxing match. Professional yeah. debuts. And I will be in. Who do you think I wins? I don't know who's corner. Who's... I actually have no idea. I might, st- I might stand in the middle. Who do you think wins? I reckon Dane will flog you, yeah. to be honest. i got the same feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't ideal. No, but I think it's, you never know. That's what's good about boxing, but I reckon your back's up against the wall, to, no, be, well... to be brutally honest. But you're looking fit. Thank you. Um, it's going to be a good, good show. There's some serious fights on there there's and some, there's probably some not so serious fights. Everybody, of course, looking forward to the Kane Collins, Nathan Brown matchup. 
Nathan well, yeah. Brown has more pressure on him than anyone in the world on that day. I know Kane has been training hard. Yeah. Has yeah, Nathan's been training he? hard because okay. he understands the predicament he's oh, okay. in if he loses. So he probably wasn't at the start, and now he's just like, I've got to lift I've my game. I've got to lift. Yeah. Yes. He's got some advice from Rocky. Mm. All right. Well, thank you very much. This has been the Footy Talk Podcast. Have yourselves a wonderful Easter. If you are heading away, of course, please drive safely. Look after yourselves. Enjoy some chocolate. Mainly do that responsibly. Uh, and we'll be back next week to do it all again. This has been the Footy Talk Podcast.